Welcome. You're listening to the I'm Wired to Inspire podcast, creatively engineered by Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist. I'm Wired to Inspire is a powerfully packed five minute podcast filled with inspiration and encouragement to get you through your day. It's designed to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Now stay tuned for your host, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist on today's episode of I'm Wired to Inspire. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. It is day four of my Faith Hacks series, and that's Practical Steps to Exercise Your Faith in Business, Five Quick Tips to Help Accelerate, Cultivate, and Increase Your Faith. I am so glad that you guys are here with me today. I really appreciate it. It has been such a good series thus far. We have hit some great topics, again, some topics that We're just not thinking about practically that could actually help us indirectly develop our faith. And I believe that those of you who are listening, you know, you're asking questions like, hey, God, have I been called to the marketplace? You know, some of you are wondering, has God given you a vision for business and enterprise? And if you do have those feelings, some of you may be struggling to walk it out with God's instructions. Others of you, you're already operating in business. You already have success. But you are always looking for ways to improve. You're always looking for ways to go harder, work smarter, and to do the things that God is calling you and leading you to do. But you want to operate in excellence and you want to do it on a higher level. So definitely, that is a huge part of why God has allowed me to do these types of series because it not only uh, helps me, but I feel like if it can help me on some level, it can certainly, you know, maybe help at least one other person. And each one of these series, I have a scripture as the basis of it. And for for faith, it's Matthew 17, 20. He replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. In this particular series, I give an acronym to HACK and it's helping you to access clever knowledge. And each one of my hack series is about action and impact. Because once you take the action that's needed to uh, see your dreams come to fruition, you will make an impact. And whatever you are focused on, whatever you are working toward, you will be able to see that thing in a way you never thought you would see it. It will be amplified because you're doing the behind the scenes work. You're doing a little extra. You're putting in the sweat equity. And that is even what this is about because... The really funny thing about faith hacks, when God had given me that, I'm like, wait a minute. Faith is intangible. And then when I realized he's giving me vision hacks and wisdom hacks, wheel hacks, provision hacks, he's giving me things that are intangible hacks. And there's a theme with that because a lot of times we want to believe in things that are intangible, things that God is showing us, like having a godly vision, having deeply rooted faith. But it is very hard to access that because it's not something we can necessarily put in our hands. So that's why I believe these types of nuggets of information add much value because it, it, it teaches you how to make couple the supernatural with the practical. And when you start to put them together, you start to see a difference. And the reason why this is so important to me is because I didn't do this. I was way too spiritual because I've been like that my whole life. I had to develop how to be balanced. I had to develop how to make sure I can not be so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good, you know, because it can really be off putting, not just, not just to other people, but you can really throw yourself off because it's just too much. God has still made us human beings and we have to be able to balance that thing out. We have to be able to do what he's calling us to do and still be able to have a great balance in our lives. Now, if you read my ebook, because there is a free ebook that comes with this series, hit the link below this podcast and you can access it if, it if you haven't yet. And I always encourage you, if you are liking the series, definitely get the ebooks because there's stuff in the, in the ebooks I've created that I don't talk about on the podcast. So I want you to get all of the tea, get all of the information so that you can have something to reference if you are not able to access the podcast and you don't have time to listen to it. I talk about the definition of faith. Faith by definition means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. 
strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. But the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 1, and I'm going to go ahead and read the King James Version. In the ebook, I have different versions, if I'm not mistaken. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we already know that faith is going to require something in us where we won't have anything in front of us to put our hands on to activate that faith. We have to go from within in order to see something happen with the thing that we believe in. So before I jump into day four, I want to give you the hashtags for the series in case you want to post on social media. Hashtag G-E-T Faith Hacks. That's Get Faith Hacks. Hashtag Faith Hacks. And hashtag Live Your Authentic Purpose. I've gotten the housekeeping out of the way. So I want to give you a quick recap of what was discussed earlier this week in this series. Day one was Use Your Mind. It's time to read. I gave some really cool information on things we don't even think about when it comes to reading and how we can actually not only increase your faith, but it can also prevent other things from happening in your life physically long term. Day two was preparation builds confidence. And I basically could give you the example of taking a test. What's the difference in how you feel when you study for the test versus when you just walk in to the test? And you have no knowledge of what's on it. That's why confidence in preparation, excuse me, that's why preparation builds confidence and faith. Because when you do the work ahead of time, you prepare yourself, you have confidence that you will succeed and you have faith that everything is going to work out on your behalf. Then there's yesterday, which was day three, create a lifestyle of discipline. That is typically the hardest thing, keeping consistency, being disciplined, you know, going harder, handling your business, because again, it's usually something that we have to do that is not easy for us to do. So when you create a lifestyle of discipline, it does increase your faith because you know that you've been consistently doing the work. And as a result, you're going to have faith again. You're going to see what you're working on come to pass. So today is day four. Time to reinvent yourself and learn from the greats. I really, really like today's topic. I hold it near and dear to my heart because this is something that I was able to learn several years ago. I really started to get hip to it when I was in college many moons ago. But even with that, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know how, you know, you may get a different haircut or you might lose weight or gain weight. You may take on a new hobby. You just may do things in life in different seasons that pretty much change the fabric of who you are. And some years ago, a mentor of mine had given me a book that was really interesting when I started reading it. And I really, I noticed not long into the book that I needed to definitely have some spiritual balance in reading that book. Because if I would have just taken it at face value, it could it could kind of come off manipulative and kind of weird. Some of the stuff made me uncomfortable. I got it and it made sense. But I understood the points that were being made. And I got what the gist of the book was. But I had to kind of pull back some nuggets for myself and kind of temper that with some wisdom. So it would not be something, you know, malicious. I could easily see how somebody could have read that book and just really went the wrong way with it. But that wasn't my story. But there was something in the book that stuck out to me that I really, really have adapted. And it is called Reinvent Yourself. That is the tip. Reinvent Yourself. And that is what brought me to today. I can tell you that the reinvention of oneself is going to definitely increase your faith for many reasons. But namely because of this. You know, Isaiah 43 and 19, which is what today is based on, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Even biblically, when God does a new thing, or in Revelations, he talks about making all things new. Even then, God will bless the new thing when it's according to his will for your life. He will bless the new thing. 
So oftentimes when we get those tugs in our spirit and our faith is low and we're not feeling all that great about ourselves and God says, hey, stop. I'm going to do a new thing. I want you to get a new haircut. I want you to move. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. That is an indicator that God is trying to increase your faith because he's trying to take you to another level. He's trying to show you something new. Now check out the latter part of the scripture, which really set it off. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So he's basically saying this. When you decide and commit to do the new thing that I'm trying to tell you to do, that's nothing like you're used to. It's the opposite of your current lifestyle. I'm changing everything up. I want you to go in this direction instead of that direction. I want you to go from dating everybody to marrying that one person. I want you to quit this job and start this business. I want you to move from where you've been your whole life and go across the country. Whatever it is God is telling you, he's telling you right here in Isaiah 43, when you commit to that new thing, when you commit to that reinvention, when you start that thing over, being led by him, he will do the impossible. Okay? He'll make a way in the wilderness. You don't even know your way in the wilderness. And he's like, nah, if you do this new thing that I'm telling you to do that I know is probably petrifying you, I know you're scared to death to do it. But not only will I do that, you can go in the desert where there's no water for miles. There's no water in sight. I will put a river there just to let you know I got you. That is why reinvention of oneself is such a huge element to increasing your faith. So, you know, as you develop your faith, you must learn how to grow and change in order to see the type of success that you desire. Because many times you have ideas that have not manifested because of your old ways. You know, the most successful people in the world have mastered this, y'all. You know, one of the, my favorite quotes, if you always do what you always did, then you always get what you always got. And it's the truth. Because here's the deal, y'all. If you're not trying to change up what's been happening, you are not going to see a difference in what you're working on. You are not going to see your goals being met. Why am I an expert on this? Because I was an expert at not completing, not being consistent, not seeing these things come to fruition. And let me tell you something. Even when you go through the reinvention process and you have to adapt and learn new things, you will hit a plateau. You will hit a crossroads. You will hit a wall because that's a part of the process. Because even right then, that's when God jumps in and says, hey, I'm about to give you another opportunity to increase your faith. You want to go from that mountain, I mean, from that uh, uh, mustard seed to a mountain? Here's where you're going to do it. Right here in the trenches, when you think I'm not there. Right now, when you have to believe. Right now, when I need you to focus on the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Right now is when I need you to increase and develop your faith. So, when I was doing this particular hack, God was showing me, he's like, you know, Robin, even now, this is when, this is when mentors came in good, you know, heavy, because let me tell you a part of reinvention. A lot of times a mentor is so great in this transitional season in your life, because typically you're looking up to somebody who can help you become great, who can help you can, be, who can help you become better. And one of the things that I always teach kids that I mentor, I've been mentoring for probably 15 years now, 15 plus years. And one of the things I always try to teach them is you have to be better than me. You have to excel. You have to go higher. You have to go further, faster. Because the thing is, when you're really focusing on helping someone and mentoring someone, you want to make them better, not even necessarily in comparison to yourself or anyone else, but you're trying to show them that I'm teaching you how to fish. You don't want to just stay with me because I know how to fish. I'm teaching you how to fish. So then you can leave me and then you can put me in your resource bucket. And whenever you need me, you can come to me. And then, you know, if I need you for something, you're developed, you're, you've grown up. I can hit you up for the things that you've now prospered into, the things that were just in your head and now they're actually in your hand. 
you know, I can actually come to you now and I was mentoring you. You've come to me, but now we can go to each other. And then you know what happens? I've taught you how to fish and I say, okay, now you go pay it forward. Now you go teach the next crew how to fish and then you teach them how to teach the next crew and vice versa. And that's what it's all about. So that's why in the reinvention season, it would behoove you to link up with the great. Learn from the greats. I have so many people that have inspired me from afar. They weren't people that I saw every day that didn't even live out here. I, they don't even know me. But I like to call them my mentors from afar. And in this season, I have one that I've really been focusing on. And I have another one. Well, I have two right now. Two men that I really enjoy their wisdom on two opposite ends of the uh, spectrum, mind you. One is hardcore and another one is like super like all about Jesus and business. And the other one is just straight up entrepreneurship, business, wealth. And I've been listening to both of them to find that balance so that I can use my practical uh, godly wisdom biblically, but also take his elements of hard work and prowess and use that to my advantage at this time in my life. So I would definitely encourage you to link up with the grades, link up with a mentor. Again, like I said, mentors from afar. So this hack is about quote unquote modeling the masters to inspire change while maintaining your authenticity. So I want to suggest someone for you to check out his, his uh, YouTube page and his name is Evan Carmichael. He has an excellent YouTube channel. Okay. And his channel is called modeling the masters. This is an incredible faith builder because he chronicles the keys to success from a plethora of successful entrepreneurs icons, and influencers. You get to see how they kept going and reached their goals through hard work and faith. Now, let me tell you, his whole premise is the word believe. He has one word and he always asks, what's your one word? And I think that that's really awesome because he's synonymous with that. He's had a goal, a consistent goal. He's been trying to reach on his page and that's to get 1 million YouTube followers. And guess what? He has over 900,000 now. So he is going to reach his goal. And I'm praying that he can reach it this year because he genuinely appears to be a really good guy and someone that has a genuine heart to see people succeed and to really believe. He really, really wants people to believe in what it is that they feel led to do, what they feel called to do. And in my case, I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. So for me, I am standing on my belief in him, but not just that, you know, a part of reinvention y'all for myself, I can just be transparent here. I had to reinvent some of the things that I thought were okay, were good for my life. And sure, they may be okay, but when you are operating in kingdom, you're not supposed to live a mediocre life. You're supposed to live a life of royalty, you know, and, and even though that's a mindset, I'm not trying to say that from a elitist or, or bougie standpoint, but you are genuinely not, you're not supposed to be consistently impoverished, consistently broke. And these are the kind of things that I would always think about, like, man, God, like everybody's dealt a different hand. So why is it like that? But it always took me back to really trusting him and everyone has their own story. We all have the opportunity to create our own narrative. So that's not God's fault. Once he gives us what it is that we have, we have to take the responsibility to put the work behind it. We have to develop those things on our own. Of course, first and foremost with his help, but I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely something that will require you to not just listen or think you hear what God is saying, but you actually have to do something about it. And I read this meme that just had me screaming, laughing yesterday, but it is so true. It said, if you don't work hard, You'll spend the rest of your life in church shouting, I receive it. Now, I really like working smart. I've worked hard my whole life and, and, and tried to do what God has told me to do. I like to work smart personally, but at the end of the day, what, what they're saying is true. You know, we want to reinvent ourselves because some of us are at a place where if we don't reinvent ourselves, if you don't reinvent yourself, you don't focus on doing that new thing and making some changes. You will be the one shouting, I receive it, and you'll never receive it. Listen, I was that girl for a long time. 
It doesn't feel good admitting it, but I don't have no mind. I don't have any problem sharing it. I was that girl for a long time. As I wrap this day four up, I want you to think about reinvention like this. It's an investment in yourself. Invest in yourself. Reinvention is an investment in yourself. It's a leap of faith. It's trying something new. It's maybe getting the haircut and is you end up not liking it, but you still have to take a, the leap of faith. It's moving away and you're petrified. You're terrified. You don't know what to do. You don't know anybody there, but you still have to go. It's, you know what? Walking away from that bad relationship and you know that's not what God wants for you. You have to leave to reinvent yourself because that situation kept you stuck in the old you. You know, it's knowing that you have to leave your business, leave your nine, excuse me, leave your nine to five and start your business. It's knowing that in this season, God is saying, hey, you can't this right now. I need you to go work for somebody so you can learn how to do this thing or I need you to get your money up. See, it's not always leave your business, leave your, uh, your nine to five and get a business. It's not always that. Sometimes it's the opposite. But whatever it is, God is going to reinvent you in the process if you allow him to do it. So again, remember Evan Carmichael's channel. It's on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash modeling the masters. And I, there are some great, great, great people and stories on there that can really help you with your business mind, really help you with some tips. And, and you, let me tell you something else he does. If you go in the comments below of any of his videos and you tell him somebody you like, let's say you have a mentor from afar or somebody famous or somebody you've seen out in the world or in media and you admire their hustle, you admire their business prowess, you can say that and he will do a video on them for you. That's what I think makes him so uh, likable because he never talks about himself in a, in, a, in a pretentious way. He'll you know talk about who he is and why he created his brand to help others, but he definitely opens the floor so that he can help you out. And I, I've always thought that was very admirable about him. So with that being said, guys, that was day four. Time to reinvent yourself and learn from the grapes. I hope that you were able to pull some nuggets from it. If you weren't, maybe you might know somebody who may get something from it. But this entire series is about helping you to develop your faith. You want to take action. You want to make impact. And you want to be able to live your authentic purpose. Learning how to stretch your face, faith through reinventing yourself and, and getting some mentors, learning from those that have come before you, really latching on to the greats, not to become them, but you are learning from them. You don't necessarily have to emulate them, but sometimes you can see how they set up their hustle. You can see how they're set up, how they set up their work ethic and you can create your own from that. So with that being said, Every day on this series, I always add a special bonus tip, and it is to make sure you download, if you haven't, the YouVersion Bible app. It's really dope, extremely convenient, and it allows you to really get down to the Word of God and just keeping it in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? My whole thing is you can, you can play this app whenever you can. If you don't have time to sit down and physically read it, play it. Romans 10, 16 says, so faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you cannot read it, you can literally hear it. Just like the Bible says, play it so that you can hear the word of God coming through to you. Substitute your playlist every now and again for God's list. You can even sit down on your phone in the bathroom while you shower and play it. You know, there's always a way y'all. And over time, you'll begin to genuinely have a desire to know and hear God for yourself. That's what this is all about. This is ultimately about your relationship, not religion. Take the steps today, no matter how small, to just do something. Just download that bad boy. Figure out the version you want. Get it on the, the, the voice that you like it to be on. And you can play that thing. And you can literally hear the word daily. And you won't feel guilty about keeping God out of the equation. You won't feel like you know, man, I'm not really hearing from God right now because I'm not, you know, I'm not reading the word. I've been doing all kinds of stuff and I've really been putting it on the back burner. This is one of those things where it can, you can t cut out the excuses because y'all, again, it's faith hacks. He already says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So that's like double, you're getting a double message every day. Because every day I'm giving you the main thing to focus on. And then I'm coming right behind it and saying, hey, in addition to that, when you keep hearing the word of God, that's going to increase your faith as well. Because y'all, I know when I get in a tough spot, 
and I know I'm taking the action, I'm doing the work, and it's still tough and I'm not seeing it from my, my putting in my efforts, I make sure I'm calling out that word because that gives me something to stand on. And because I know God's word does not come back void and he is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent, he's going to keep that thing together and he's going to make it come to pass, especially when I know I've asked him according to his perfect will for my life. So I know he's going to do it. And that's what you need to know too. Know that he's going to do it for you. So that's a wrap on today, guys. I thank you so much for joining me. And I appreciate that you are giving me your time. It means the world to me. And tomorrow will be our last day. Our last day is my favorite day. And it it really is piggybacking off of what Evan Carmichael said. You know, what's your one word? Well, on day five is when I come with the questions. But the topic is stop sleeping on what you have and get a new perspective. I'm Wired to Inspire. I hope you are too. Thanks for listening to I'm Wired to Inspire podcast at I'mWiredToInspire.com. If you enjoyed the show, spread the word and be sure to hit the five-star rating on iTunes. For more information on this podcast and inspirational products and services, log on to the inspirationspecialist.life or I'mWiredToInspire.com. And remember to live your authentic purpose. Thanks again and see you next time.